to leave some time for questions. And you better come up with questions because if you do not, we will come up questions for you. <laughs> This morning we were talking about the focus echo exam, and I wanted to go over some basic things about a focus echo exam. And we will be leaving this talk and the other talks for you to use to train each other. So we'll cover some cardiac anatomy, the basic echo protocol, standard views, and I'll show you some common pathologies. So you know that the heart is difficult to image with ultrasound because it is very protected. There are the ribs, the lungs surrounding it, so it makes it difficult to see with ultrasound. So the basic echo protocol is using the handhelds. We are just doing two-dimensional imaging and color flow Doppler. We spend most of our time in the parasternal window, looking at the parasternal long and short axis views. So, in cardiology, we love abbreviations. But you know where you will be learning most of these. So, standard views and technique. We image most of our patients turned on their left side, which shifts the heart out from underneath their sternum. So to see the long axis, the indicator on the probe is towards the patient's left, excuse me, right shoulder. And this is the anatomy that we see in the parasol long axis view. So of course we see the left atrium, left ventricle, aortic, and some of the right ventricle. So this is the anatomy in a still image. This is looking at motion. And for all the images, I like to look in a systematic fashion. I start with the left atrium, and I want to see if the left atrium is normal in size. If the aorta is normal in size, the left atrium should be about the same size, maybe slightly larger. Then I just follow the blood. Is the mitral valve normal? Is the left ventricle normal? Is the aortic valve normal? So the blood in, the blood out. 
The pericardium, the fibrous pericardium is usually the brightest structure around the heart. And the walls of the ventricle, the posterior and septal walls, should be right about one centimeter in diameter. We covered this yesterday. If you were here, one of the problems is not having enough gain on the control, and this is low gain. And then the other problem where we have excessive gain, too high of gain. So we destroy the resolution. And then of course you can change the depth. This is a shallow depth. This is a deeper depth. And then a wider sector and a narrow sector. All controls on the machine. So the good news is that you control a lot of things. The bad news is that you control a lot of things that you can make worse. <laughs> So this is looking at color Doppler with a normally positioned color box looking for mitral regurgitation. And this is the long axis looking for mitral regurgitation where the box is not covering the left atrium. So this is good position, this is bad position. If you were looking for aortic insufficiency, both of these would be good position. So still in the peristernal window, if you rotate the transducer beam 90 degrees clockwise, then you can see the short axis. This is the long axis, this is the short axis. And now the transducer, the indicator on the transducer is pointing to the patient's left shoulder. And at the level of the two papillary muscles, we see the short axis, the left ventricle as a circle. And of course, at this level, we see the left ventricle, ventricular septum, right ventricle. And then you can sweep up to the mitral valve, aortic valve. But here, the short axis is in the center of the sector, and here it is off-center. 
So again, you are controlling what the image looks like. So angling up more superior, we start seeing the mitral valve. And in this view, of course, the anterior leaflet is on top, and this is the posterior leaflet. And as we angle up more superior, we start seeing the short axis of the aortic valve. After the parasternal window, you slide the transducer out to the patient's apex. And this is where we see all four chambers, the apical four chambers. And from this morning, this is of course where we would get the global longitudinal strain from the apical views. The orientation of the heart within the chest is with the atria on top and the ventricles on the bottom. But in echocardiography, we invert that and we have the ventricles on the top, the atria on the bottom. Only echo does this. All other imaging modalities has it with atria on top, ventricles on the bottom. <laughs> so we like to turn it upside down and it is not good. <laughs> but that is what we deal with. In pediatrics, they invert the images. So pediatricians do it correctly. And again, with color flow Doppler, we now have good flow because we are more parallel to flow into the ventricle and flow out of the ventricle. If we angle the beam up superior, we start seeing some of the left ventricular outflow track and the aortic valve. We call this the apical five chamber view, but I don't think there's really five chambers. But here's an example looking with the apical four chamber angling up to see the aortic valve. A good view for looking for aortic velocities and aortic insufficiency. So here is just looking at normal flow during systole out the aortic valve. And the last window or position is subcostal. 
And here we can get the four chambers and also we can look for the inferior vena cava. So we see some of the liver, hepatic vein, IBC connecting with the right atrium. This, of course, is a great view to look for the IBC dilated with right atrial pressures. Especially if the patient has a pericardial fusion, you are worried about tamponade. If the IBC is normal and collapses, then they probably do not have cardiac tamponade. And this was also where we measured it to see about right atrial pressures to estimate that for right ventricular systolic pressure. So I put together some pathologies and I'll pair them with the normal versus some abnormality. So we see the bright pericardium on both sides, but here there is an echo-free space between the pericardium and the heart itself. But when you look at the ventricle, again you look, is the left atrium normal? It appears normal. The ventricle is maybe hypertrophied, but good systolic function, and the aortic valve looks normal. And of course the pericardial effusion. And this is a smaller pericardial fusion compared to this patient who has a very large pericardial fusion. So looking at this parasternal long axis view, first again, is the left atrium normal? Compared to the aorta, the left atrium is very much larger. Then is the mitral valve normal? And the normal mitral valve, the anterior leaflet, should tip up towards the septum. Here it is tied together. So it's classic for rheumatic mitral valve disease. And the left ventricle looks okay, but the right ventricle is enlarged compared to the right ventricle. So the good news is there is no pericardial fusion. The bad news is they have rheumatic mitral stenosis. So this is the normal mitral valve, left atrium, compared to rheumatic heart disease. 
các bạn nhìn để so sánh cho hình ảnh dương kinh bình thường cái vận động của lá chiếc văn hai lá và cái hình ảnh cái tay phải đấy là vận vận động của văn hai lá ở bệnh nhân có hẹp văn hai lá cho thấp And in the apical four chamber view, similar patient with rheumatic mitral valve disease, very large left atrium. Uh, đây là cái mặt cắt vuông vuông từ mỏng của một bệnh nhân có bệnh van tim bệnh van hai lá thấp. Ta thấy là cái vùng nhĩ trái của bệnh nhân rất giãn. So this is a normal apical four chamber, normal atrial, left atrium, right atrium. Compared to the rheumatic patient. Chúng ta nhìn sang bên trái một cái hình ảnh bốn vùng từ mỏng của bệnh nhân bình thường, với kích thước vùng thất trái, vùng nhĩ trái, vùng nhĩ phải đều bình thường. Còn bên tay phải, các bạn để ý thấy là gì? Một vùng nhĩ trái rất giãn. So again, looking at this patient, I look at the left atrium first. It looks a little dilated compared to the aorta. Bây giờ một hình ảnh bệnh lý khác, các bạn sẽ thấy là nếu mà so sánh tương quan giữa nhĩ trái và thất trạng, giữa nhĩ trái và động mạch chủ, thì thường như lúc ban đầu ông nói tức là kích thước của động mạch chủ và nhĩ trái là gần tương đương nhau, nhưng ở đây thì nhĩ trái tặng hơn động mạch chủ rất nhiều. The mitral valve is not opening very well, but the ventricle is very dilated and hypocontractile. Ở đây thì là thấy là cái ban động ban hai lá mở không tốt lắm, và đồng thời là cái vùng thân nhĩ thất trái cũng giãn rất nhiều. So the mitral valve, the aortic valves are not opening because of low stroke volume. So again, the normal peristernal long axis versus a dilated cardiomyopathy. This could be due to a viral myocarditis, could be toxic like alcohol. There's lots of different reasons why the ventricle fails. As you can imagine, this patient is probably very short of breath. So, no pericardial fusion, but a bad left ventricle. And here in the peristomal short axis, the level of papillary muscles normal on the left, a dilated cardiomyopathy on the right. Và ta lại nhìn so sánh những cái hình ảnh siêu tinh trung ngắn ở bệnh nhân bình thường với cả một bệnh nhân bệnh cơ tinh giãn, một tinh trái rất giãn. You know, all of echocardiography is pattern recognition. So the more examples you see, then the better you will be able to identify the abnormalities. Uh, như vậy thì lại thấy là gì là khi mà ta đánh giá hình ảnh siêu tinh càng tốt, uh, cái đánh giá của người ta với cả bệnh lý của bệnh nhân càng dậy. So here we turned on color Doppler, looking for mitral regurgitation, and in the normal patient, there is no mitral regurgitation by color. Here is severe mitral regurgitation. Khi ta sử dụng đất đai màu và các bốn buồng, ta thấy là bên tay trái là một trường hợp bình thường, không có hở hai lá. Tức là có cái hở hai lá rất nhỏ ở đây. Thế còn bên tay phải của chúng ta, ta thấy là so in the long axis view, there is again no mitral regurgitation versus some mitral regurgitation in this dilated cardiomyopathy. We tend to look at the size of the mitral regurgitation, the size of the colored jet. So this would be mild, this would be severe. But there are problems with just looking at the size of the jet. 
So you have to be aware, does the patient have a normal blood pressure? And are you angling around seeing the entire gel? Uh, but you also look at this left atrium, and this left atrium is not as large as the one with the larger mitral regurgitation jet, the more severe. And this is the aortic valve in the normal patient versus somebody with aortic stenosis. So the left atrium is normal size, the mitral valve is fairly normal, but the left ventricle has hypertrophy, and the aortic leaflets are thick and not opening. Of course, we would use continuous wave Doppler to look at the velocity and the gradient across that valve. So this is the normal patient with no aortic insufficiency, aortic regurgitation, versus some diastolic flow with mild to moderate aortic regurgitation. And this patient, of course, has both some mitral regurgitation and some aortic regurgitation. Probably more on the mild side. Versus this patient with severe aortic and mitral regurgitation. So the left atrium is enlarged, a large mitral regurgitation, systolic flow, and a large diastolic aortic regurgitation. And this is the normal again, of course, versus the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy where the ventricle walls are much thicker. But these wall, the function of the left ventricle is also depressed for down. So they would have two problems. One is diastolic filling and then systolic function. And in the subcostal position, besides looking at the IVC, this is the four chambers in a patient with a pericardial fusion. So we see the liver and then an echo free space fluid around the heart. And this is a normal subcostal IVC, inferior vena cava, 
into the right atrium versus a dilated IVC. Ở bên tay trái ta thấy một cái hình ảnh của tĩnh mạch chủ dưới như thường đối với cả nhĩ trái. Tuy nhiên mà ở nhĩ phải, thế còn về bên tay phải ta thấy là hình ảnh của cái tĩnh mạch chủ dưới giãn nối với nhĩ phải. This would indicate high right atrial pressures, maybe from tricuspid regurgitation, maybe from cardiac tamponade. Ở bệnh nhân này thì chúng ta sẽ thấy là cái tĩnh mạch chủ dưới giãn có thể là do cái tình trạng thở ba lá nặng hoặc cũng có thể là do ép tim. And here we're measuring the IVC. This one measures 2.8. So any measurement greater than 2.1 is dilated. And you want to measure it just past the hepatic vein, just right about that level. Chúng ta sẽ đo ở cái vị trí mà phía trước, phía dưới của tĩnh mạch trên gan, ở cái ngưỡng như này. 